There we go, folks. Good evening, and this is something different altogether. I'm simply practicing hover taxiing in this uh, SA 342M. I think it's an M version of the Gazelle, uh, which is one of my new toys. It's a light French light attack, well, and scout helicopter. This is the M version, which means it's the anti-tank version. It comes with three hot missiles and. No, 34, and it has a um, TV system. The missiles are wire guided with a battery of 4 kilometers, but I'm not going to combat with it. I'm simply trying to learn to keep it under control just over the ground manually. I'm not using any form of autopilot, and it assumes it wants to go that way. Go that way, and we're actually going to the airfield to orbit because the mechanics don't really come to the helipads. So, this is the Batumi airfield on the Caucasus map. We're going a bit fast here. And let's try to keep her steady. She is very twitchy, a very responsive helicopter, but. And this is me hovering, trying at least to hover. It's my second day in the Gazelle, and I have tried the other helicopters in DCS. I have the MI-8, the UH-1, and the KA-50, but with this one, I'm see seemingly I'm doing quite well at this low-level hover taxiing. I do not use rudder pedals, by the way. I actually have my controls mapped to my stick and a few other places. So, this is it. It's the SA. 342M Gazelle. The game, the module comes with two other versions, the Mistral, which is the air-to-air -air version, and the L, which comes with a cannon and a rocket pod. Uh, this is the only version, I think, that has the uh, Vivian aiming pod, which is, if you've played Black Shark, basically it's very similar to the Shkval, and basically it's exactly what it does, but here we have a Two crewmen team. One guy flies the helicopter, the other guy operates the weapon. So basically, a weapon systems officer. We're basically very low here. I'm simply hovering at about kilometers an hour just off the ground. I have to learn to anticipate her because she's, as I said, she twitches much at low level. In level flight, she is very easy to fly, but this is just the, the helicopter basics, hover taxiing. And I'm taxiing over the grass. I mean, it's a helicopter, it doesn't really need much, but still trying to be careful. And I've actually been able to land her, even though she is trying to kill me all the time. She is. This is a killer helicopter, so many others, I mean, have tried, and there are many videos about it. So I'm not going to teach you how to fly it. This is you watching me how how I fly this and you can leave me criticisms and tell me what I could do better or you can ask me questions about the gazelle in the comments below that also works and we've had some unfortunate events here yesterday at Batumi with the uh, radar trucks I was trying to land on a nearby helipad and my uh, tail boom got caught in the uh, one of the radar antennas, so yeah, well, I think I'm doing pretty well so far. I mean, I haven't died, and okay, let's see. Okay, let's try to follow this taxiway actually to to the ramp. We're just gonna hover over it. That's what helicopters do, you know, they hover. I'm using very little pedal, the pedals that I don't have input here, using the the ZNX key is on the keyboard, more or less, and let's try to slow it down. Uh, not climb, I don't want to climb, I just want to follow the taxiway all the way to the ramp. As you would if I would take, take off from a ramp, but I had to go from a helipad, which I have installed just off the runway. I have three helipads here, this is my training map. Uh, you have seen it before, it has the evil BTR-80s, if you remember them. Those guys are evil, and it has some other ground targets as well. 
But until we get to combat, let's just learn to fly this bird. I have flown the Viggen, the MiG-21 here before, the F-5. So it's, it's my practice map, more or less. I have also the Mirage here. I have a couple of them. So this is a multiplayer map, so people can actually join it. I just don't host multiplayer games yet. I don't want to make a fool of myself, I guess. And of course you can, you know, come join and have fun whenever I decide to host the multiplayer maps and the games. So it's not really a big problem. It's just I'm not confident enough in my piloting abilities. So I guess I don't want to make a fool of myself. I am trying to learn. As you can see, we left the taxi away, but we're still taxiing, still trying to get her to cooperate. I call it a her because, I don't know, the name Gazelle just, I don't know, makes me think about a girl. That's stupid of me to say, but yeah, I mean, she's very agile. She's very nimble. She is type of helicopter that, you know, goes and it's being a scout helicopter. I think it also has a laser designation pod in the Vivian system, but I'm not entirely sure. I know at least it has ra laser ranging, so it's it's quite something. Uh, the red thing where you have to see the moving diamond, that's the um, my cyclic position. My pedals are set in a certain way, so I'm just trying to keep the nose in a certain direction. The well, the instruments are pretty standard. This uses the metric system, being a French helicopter. Uh, initially produced by Aerospatial, but now it's produced by at least the spare parts, because it's actually quite widely exported, are uh, produced by Airbus helicopters. Airbus seems to be acquiring almost everything in the French aerospace industry. Well, it's not a bad thing. I mean, Airbus is not a bad company in my personal opinion, but... Well, business and politics are not really my thing. I enjoy flying aircraft. So they can make, they can build me nice aircraft. I'll, I'll accept their nice aircraft if, if they keep them building. So, well, that's fine. Yeah, this is, this is hover taxi practice, by the way. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm apparently more successful with the. Gazelle here than I am with the more established and allegedly easier to fly helicopters like the Mi-8, uh, Huey and well A-50 is dumb easy for like it's not easy to fly but compared to the other helicopters it's easy because it has uh, counter rotating rotors it doesn't have a tail rotor so it basically generates anti torque. So that's, that makes it like more beginner friendly. This is considered the hardest helicopter to fly in DCS. And I understand why it's very twitchy and it's very hard to control in my opinion, but I'm apparently surviving. A Huey, I've never really had that much success with the Huey before. I have, you know, flown it, landed, I even landed it on a ship. But so far, it's just hover taxiing, and this was a bit fast. Let's. And we're climbing, which is not good. Let's try to keep her down. And I'll cut the collective a little bit. And we're already flying. That's okay. We're going to try to land at the airfield. I don't know why. I think she caught too much speed and decided to just shoot up like a. Alright, let's see if we can. Get, co get her to cooperate in landing. This is, again, the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia, so... Trying to cut off the speed a bit. And hopefully make it descend. We can fly a bit around the airfield. Well, my hover taxing failed, but... I need to practice descents also, so... Uh, this aircraft does have a very interesting... Auto hover system. I'm actually almost capable of activating it, but I might be going a bit too fast for it. You need to be basically in a manually induced hover. I can still use my pedals to twist around and cut the speed. And I'm actually kind of 
three hands flying here. If I had three hands, I would fly with three hands, but I can't. I don't, so... There we go. It wanted to go a bit fast. And let's not let it sink to the ground. I, uh, I haven't gotten this helicopter to VRS yet, which is pretty amazing. I'm notorious for making the MI-8 drop like a rock, even though I'm just probably not used to it, and it's just too large for my taste. But there we go, we're you know, capable hover taxi, and I haven't dropped her dead yet, so that's not, never a bad thing. Let's try to go to the... There are a few helipads, well, at least departure points here at the airfield in Batumi, so let's try to slow the slower down to a standstill. Okay. This is not easy. Trust me, helicopters are anything but easy. There we go, we entered hover mode. The L autopilot will eventually stabilize the helicopter in a 10 by 10 uh, square meter or 10 foot area. But since we're here, we're going to di disengage the autopilot. We're gonna keep her down and just slowly set her to the deck. But sideways, Jeez, uh, that is not good. All right, let's settle here. Now let's talk to the local guys and request ourselves some guns. Just, you know, uh, we don't really need the sand filter. Alright, let's just pick an official livery that we official livery that they have here. Uh, now, while we're on the ground, I'm going to talk a bit about the, what I actually like about it so far. I mean, instruments are very easy. Backup ADI, main ADI, virtual speed indicator, speedometer, uh, torque, basically RPM, uh, HSI, radio altimeter, altimeter. And we have here the lights control panel, here we have an electrical control panel, which also has a trim control, the pitot heat, then we have the um, magnetic trim, Here's the autopilot, basically it's not an autopilot, it's an SAS, uh, the pump, fuel pump, the turbine starter, and let's go to the upper quadrant if my mouse wants to play, nice. Here we have a rotor brake, fuel cutoff, this uh, switch here is not, the sleeper is not enabled in the this version of the cell. Uh, radio radar warning receiver, this little TV set here, no we're not watching football on it, this is for the VVA targeting system, uh, this is the Nadir IMS system, this is the FM radio, so if we have something that works in the FM, uh, it's what we would use. See, there you go, this is the radio channel, so if we have, if we have presets, we can use those. Uh, this is the countermeasure panel. Let's start them up. We might fly through a, how to call it, a hot zone. So we have the evil BTRs. And here's the main UHF radio. This is very similar to the Mirage in some ways. Basically, you can enter waypoints and so on. And yeah, it's a very simple helicopter, as I said. It's not exactly complicated. I mean, the main thing you need to care care about as a pilot is this. Here we have 40 and the E3. We have a ship and an E3 sentry that's flying around the area, providing AWACS, but we're not an aircraft, so we don't really care. So let's try a nice takeoff here. I'm going to pull the stick a bit backwards and to the right. And I'm going to pull up the collective. At about halfway here, it's going to start going up, roughly, actually about 70%, my mistake. I am using curves because it's she's a twitchy girl. There we go, we're going up. Let's gain some altitude. Let's correct. We don't want to go sideways. We're trying to go up. And there we go. 
No, we can actually give her a bit more. Yeah, let's go between the lamp post then. Okay, let's use the pedals to keep her more or less going. And we're gonna fly over Batumi. This is the town of Batumi. I mean, I don't think it's very realistic, but a re very realistic copy of it, but yeah, it's there. So we have it. Thank you, Eagle Dynamics, for making this whole area for us. Now, the way this helicopter works, uh, the autopilot, uh, technically, I wouldn't even need to touch the cyclic. I could just go with, with the whole thing centered. And I am. And I could simply use the trimmer, which is... to dictate the speed I'm going at. See? It, I can go nose up, nose down. Uh, this is actually something that happens on the real helicopter. Pilots don't really use the cyclic much to fly. The trimmer does it for you. It's a bit wobbly for me, but... Yeah, it, it goes. The autopilot itself has two modes. Speed hold and altitude hold. Very self-explanatory. What they do, I mean, that's all they all they do. It doesn't have heading call or anything. You might be used from the K50 if you fly the K50. We're flying very slow, about 120 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna cut the collective to about 40 percent. Apparently, it likes to climb, so the engine itself is not very powerful, but I mean, as can be expected for a small helicopter. And there we go. It's gonna eventually settle. The autopilot will hopefully take control. I haven't tried the trimmer yet. Seems I have to take control. So now let's try to keep it level. That's the Batumi power plant, I think. Looks like a power plant. Let's keep it a bit more collective. This is the harbor. Uh, this is actually, I think. The oil industry uses this harbor a lot, but I'm not entirely sure. Let's actually try to turn here. We're doing the same flight I did last night from Batumi to Kobuleti. Kobuleti is another town very close to the Georgian coast, just beyond my firing range. So yeah, that's a place I would like to avoid. The firing range is full of evil BTRs that I don't want to be play with tonight. Even though we could drop some missiles and see, you know, how well we do, but I mean, the range is so much smaller than the Vicar, it's about only four kilometers. So, no, no, thank you very much. Those BDRs can shoot me down before I can say something. So, and we're flying low here. I'm just enjoying the coastline, more or less. It's, it's quite nice. Uh, it's a bit wobbly, but I'll just fly it by hand. So I'm doing about 140 kilometers an hour. This can do a lot faster. It actually can, can go about um, what 200 something. I haven't gotten it that far yet. That's its maximum operating speed. 260 was it? 265? I don't really remember to be honest. Uh, it's around there. I mean, it's not much slower than the K50, just the engine is not very powerful on it, and it's, well, it's much smaller. And it has a different, completely different role, even to the Huey, I mean. I mean, this thing can be used for troop insertions, but it can carry only up to five people, so a small group of soldiers could potentially use it to, you know, be inserted somewhere, or something like that, or transport some persons. But not much else, it's in that regard's a bit limited. But the role it excels at is scouting. It's a scout aircraft, first of all. And uh, let's see. Copuleti is a bit to our right. Uh, the HSI actually shows us the exact location of the, the outer NDB marker, which we are using. The inner NDB marker I haven't set. I'm just going to use the inner NDB than the outer one to um, get to the airport. This has ADF navigation or INS navigation. 
haven't gotten to the iron yet, yet just using the stuff I know. I know NDB works, so yeah. Uh, I flown it yesterday, but without the autopilot, without the trimming, so I'll just give it a bit more power here to the collective. Basically, it works the same as any other helicopter. It's nothing really weird about it. It's a, as generic as you can have a have helicopter. Of course, I mean it's special in its own way. But let's go over these power lines. I don't want to get tangled with them. Power lines kill helicopters, trust me. Well, you should know that, I mean. If you're gonna ask me again what other planes I fly, yes, I do fly the uh, L-39 on occasion. I prefer to fly, fly them around here because the Nevada map does not have RSBN. Well, it does, but I don't really like using RSBN there. Just doesn't feel proper and I here I prefer using Russian aircraft or anything that can use NDB like the Huey. The Georgian airports usually have also TACAM or maybe even VOR but for ILS systems. Let's trim her a bit to the right. Uh, she does have a tendency of banging left sometimes, I don't know why. At least happened to me a few times, like a couple of locations. Yeah, see, I'm going almost 200 now. With helicopters, just it's doing quite well. Now let's see. We're gonna go over this hill or mountain. And uh, if we go up, you know, nose up, it will lose speed, just like an aircraft, normal fixed wing aircraft. I'm just using a bit of nose up attitude to get it over and I have the collective that is at a proper setting so yes I'm in a good mood I'm actually quite happy about this helicopter to be honest all right um, the way this navigation system works it's basically the double needle if you look at the HSI we have um, two needles, a narrow one and a thick one. The narrow one is for ADF and the big one is for... Um, now let's pull her up here, okay, over the mountain. And I think we lost... Oh yeah, the NDB station doesn't work on the other side of the uh, mountain. NDB does not work through mountains. We need to have a clear reception, so... And... let's see... Now, I'm not going to use the F10 map. I'm, I have a, a, like a very general idea where the Kobuleti airfield is, so I can fly myself there, but... This is gonna take a while, I mean, we're not the fastest aircraft on the chopping block. And there's a, one of my Humvees, uh, he's designated as a JTAG, and there's the evil air, air, airfield of evil. So... Yeah, I'm not flying low this time. This thing can actually fly pretty low. Last night I tried it. It was just fine. See, told you, that's evil. That's where evil is. Evil, well, if a certain friend of mine watches, they will know the reference to evil, but yeah.
We were doing about 180 kilometers an hour, not very fast. But as I said, we can do more, we can do 265, but I just like to keep her cruising at a more reasonable speed. Trimmer seems to be quite sensitive. Yeah, and I'll just use the collective to drop altitude. Um, if we look around, I'm actually flying fairly stable. There's, there is evil. See? There it is. Those labels. I haven't disabled them. Just so I know where I am. There's a bunch of trucks there to the... couple of trucks that I put in. I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, for target practice. I prefer doing ground attack. It's one of my favorite activities, so... That's why there's trucks, there's bombing targets, and... You know, those BTRs can actually shoot low-flying, fast aircraft. I'm baffled. Okay. Yeah, the trim is way too sensitive. That trim was way too sensitive for my taste. See, even when going up, not worry, we're not gonna crash. We're simply just. I can, I can basically get her down, but. And I don't let her crash, but it's just very nasty when those things happen. Also, I have a better view of the area now. The Kobuleti airfield is about somewhere just ahead of us. Let's trim her a bit to the right. And left and right trim seems to be a little more, well, how to say this, acceptable. But the forward and backward trim seems to be a bit off, so I need to adjust some sensitivities there. I actually took my hands off the controls at this moment. I'm not even using the pedals or anything, the helicopter basically due to the trimming system, it's flying itself. Uh, it's not a pure autopilot, it's not something you can configure like in an airliner or I don't know if other helicopters have autopilot, but I mean it's a decent thing, it does its job as an autopilot. I can actually look around now, so it does not, this uh, variant has one more seat in the back. So, we can see the rotor spinning, if you look at like, see, there's the rotor, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, Polychop simulations, they did a good job with this helicopter, I think I like it quite a bit. And our HSI has lost its mind, it believes that the station is 36 kilometers away, but it's not, uh, let's check the F10 map. It's 870 kilohertz. Alright, so what was the other one? It was 490, so we're gonna go to the co-pilot co seat. We're gonna look at the ADF radio and let's set it to 490 kilohertz. And then Yeah, we are on the right frequency. Odd. Anyway. Hopefully the airfield is actually 
there it is. Normally, I last time I flew, there's a, a river that goes in a general that way direction, and then I flew the river, follow the river to the uh, airfield, uh, just VF, basic VFR. I looked at the map before, so I knew where I was going, and just followed basic landmarks to reach my destination. That's actually VFR flight, so. Okay, let's start our gentle descent into Coboletti. We're going to orbit around a bit as we descend. I'm not going to do a straight in descent to the airfield. And I'm going to pull on the nose a bit backwards, just a tiny bit. We're going to start losing speed. And I will drop the collective to about there. So it starts losing altitude. Now it's gaining altitude because we have a nose up attitude or catitude. See, it's the. I have to use the well, so called pedals I have mapped to keep her steady. Now we're about below 100 kilometers an hour. So I'm gonna try descent into Kobuleri. She still wants to go forward, it seems. Yeah, I call her as she is, I said. I don't know why, it just feels. It should, she should be a girl. Alright, we're gonna turn soon into Kobuleri, so I'm gonna set a okay, decent rate. Uh, the aim is to land on one of the taxiways or the runway, that's either way works for me. And let's let the helicopter turn, it's not a problem. And let's apply some right pedal, that's the runway. And let's try to go forward, I mean, let's not just hover here, even though I can, but... Now let's give her a bit more collective. Now I wish I really had a proper HOTAS set up with pedals and a throttle, so I guess I have to buy one, huh? If I want to fly these helos. I actually like them. One of the things that kind of keeps me interested in helos is their ability to, you know, vertical takeoff and landing. Something I always like. It's one of the reasons you will see me do a lot of videos about the Harrier. One of my favorite, all-time favorite aircraft. So we're almost hovering here, but not really. That's we're about 50 kilometers an hour. Actually, even less than that. We're about 36 kilometers an hour, and we're just orbiting a, a bit around here. Let's not try to gain too much speed. We're still climbing. It's pretty hard to do this with a slider. So, yeah, I have a slider for a throttle on the joystick. So, we're slowly turning, but I'm not going to do anything about it. I might apply a bit of. Right, rather, but that's about it. And I'm trying to maintain airspeed and descent. Airspeed went a bit high there. I'm actually flying quite slowly. Decent rate's good, I'm just keeping it here. I'm flying slow now, so because I'm not really experienced, I don't want to do a sudden hover stop. I can, but I don't want to. At least I think I can. <laughs> I 
So this is just low, not a slow flying the gazelle. Okay, I'm gonna grab the collective a bit now. I'm going again very, very slowly. I'm actually scared of a VRS because I'm at low altitude, so. The VRS is a vortex ring state. Uh, this helicopter is, according to what people say on the internet, kind of prone to VRS, but I haven't gotten into VRS yet, so that's, I guess, I don't know, probably just my luck or I haven't been doing the right things to make it VRS. Who knows? I'm flying a bit sideways here, but that should be just about fine. And let's give her a bit more collective. I don't want to drop like a rock like I do with MI8. I'm, as I said, I'm notorious for destroying the poor MI8 how many times already. And I do like the, that helicopter quite a bit. And here we go. If she wants to go right, for some reason she has a tendency of going right sometimes, so I'm just being careful here. I probably won't, this won't be a textbook landing, but I'm just trying to go slow and maintain altitude and speed, and then as I'm going over go the runway or taxiway, I'm going to start descending into Kogulady. This uh, helicopter does not have TACAN, even though it's a NATO helicopter. Uh, it's from the 1970s, 60s, 70s, I think. Let's give it a bit more juice to the collective. We're, uh, we are descending, so... Alright, let's try to not let her... I mean, hovering would be nice, but I don't want to hover, I want to reach the airfield. But yeah, this is it. I got it to a pretty decent descent. I'm gonna keep her here by using the collective. Kind of, this helicopter kind of grew on me a bit. See, we're over the water. There's the ground effect. Uh, I'm not sure how this differs much from the Huey. Like the power, strength of the ground effect this helicopter produces. It's small. It's it's a very tiny helicopter, as I said. I mean, it's more, more or less the size of a Bell Jet Ranger, I think. Perhaps a bit slightly larger. I have no idea. So I'm just taxiing this now at an altitude of some meters. Actually, below 50. So I'm just taxiing this to the airfield over the ground. Now I'm about 27 meters above the ground. So let's. Give her some gas, proverbial gas, get some speed. I can slow down once I'm at the airfield. Uh, not too much altitude, I don't want to climb. And well, I am climbing, so. Alright. Okay, more collective. Let's stay still. Let's not try to descend very fast. This is my second actual landing attempt. Again, we're taxiing above the ground. And I use the pedals to turn the nose. Okay. And this is going to take a while. Uh, so, if you want to watch it to the end, well, I'll be happy. If not, then. Of course, feel free to not watch it. My descent was a bit badly calculated. I could have just descended better closer to the airfield, but... And I'm using the virtual, the vertical velocity indicator. I'm just hovering a few meters above the ground now. And let's go. There's an IL-76. I could actually like to land close to that, but... Precision landings are out of the question at the moment. I'm not that good yet, so maybe when I'll get the actual pedals and everything, I'll probably be a lot better because now I have to use so many hands for so many things. 
Well, not like I have more than a few hands, or maybe I do, but... The autopilot actually is quite responsive. It keeps wanting to keep the helicopter the attitude it had before, so usually level flight. Now this I cannot do in an MI-8. I know the MI-8 is capable of doing low flight, and hover taxiing also, it's a helicopter after all. But I'm not capable of doing it in the MI-8. Even though it's an awesome helicopter, I enjoy it, I just can't do it in the MI-8. It's probably the most, not this is the most unforgiving helicopter that I know of, but See if I gain some altitude, not much, just enough to actually see where I'm going and keep the speed, speed, level, you know, more or less under control. And let's go land to the next to that IL-76 or 78, I don't know if it's the tanker version or the cargo version. The IL-78 is basically an IL-76 that the illusion has converted the illusion has converted from the Russian Air Force to the aerial ta refueling tanker and the IL-76 is the cargo plane. It's a pretty decent cargo plane, actually, as far as I know. So they're still flying, they're still doing okay. Many of them have are being used in the West as well. They've had to you know give them a lot of Western avionics because they used to have like most Russian aircraft used to have. Uh, metric system and here we can go up a bit let's try to keep her this level and let's 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 go visit that IL-76 it's an awesome plane I hope the locals are not too judgmental about it all right collective up That's my final goal for this exercise, just go see the IL-76 or 78, whichever it is, I do not know. I'm flying just very low to the ground. But the goal is to reach that plane and land somewhere close to it. Not very close, of course. I don't want to bump into it, but that's my overall goal. So let's slow slower down a bit. Again, she's twitchy. She's very responsive, but she's very twitchy at the same time. So let's cut that chatter and try to set her down closer, no, maybe next to that uh, fuel truck. Yeah, that fuel truck's a good spot to land. Alright, let's go up a bit. And stop. There we go. I'll grab the collective and set us down here. And 
And there we go. Flight completed. At least I accomplished my mission. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to criticize my flying skills and the gazelle. I'm not gonna just do this whole shutdown procedure, but yeah, this is it. Flight to Batumi from from Batumi to Kobuleri in the SA-342 M Gazelle. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a good night. Bye bye.